Hi guys, welcome back to the Super Math for You. This is Mr. Urego, and today we're reviewing the Algebra 1 EOC, solving more problems of systems of linear inequalities by graphing. First problem solve the systems of linear inequalities by graphing. We have two inequalities, that's why they call system. When you have two or more, we can have three or four or more. You know, right now only two. Inequalities, look at the symbols. How? By graphing. Steps. These are the steps. First thing is writing slope into the form. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take every inequality and I'm going to write it in slope into the form. The first thing that I do is I turn that inequality simple into an equation and then I leave the y by itself. You notice that there's no work to do because right there the y, the y is by itself, which is what they're asking me. Isolate it. Then I graph the boundary lines. What are the graph? The boundary lines basically is drawing the line. Okay, so real quick, the y-intercept is five. Let's pretend that the y-intercept, my slope is negative three over two over one. So I go one, two, three, and one to the right. Okay, and that's gonna be I have the two points. So I'm gonna go quick, but I'll do this again. So these are the two points that I'm gonna be using to draw to graph this line. They're saying graph the boundary lines solid. If the inequality symbol is less than or equal to, it has an equal underneath, equal underneath. So if my inequality symbol has an equal underneath, which is the second inequality, my line will be a solid line. In my case, because there's no equal underneath, then it's going to be, look, no equal underneath, it's going to be a dashed line. So if these are the two points that I'm going to use for this line, then my line is going to be a dashed line. Okay, that's what it means. If it has an equal, then it's going to be a solid line. All right? Okay. And then after that, it says shade above when it's greater than or greater than or equal to or shade below when it's less than or less than or equal to. I go back to the inequality symbol. Right now, y is greater. So I come over here and it says greater shade above. So if this is the line, above is to the right on top of it. So my shade will be on top of the line. Why? Because it has greater. In the second line, on the second inequality, it has less than. So if this would be the line, then less it would be below. That would be my shaded. All right, let's work on this. Negative 3x plus 5. Y intercept is 5. My slope is negative 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3, and 1 to the right. Those are my two points. I come over here. There's no equal in the need, so my line is going to be a, sh a dash line. That's a dash line, a straight line, okay? And then, because it has a greater than, the shade is going to be to the right. So from my line to the right from my line to the right okay and that shape keeps going and going and going right all that is the half plane all this we want to do is we want to have some kind of pattern because we need to do the same thing with the second one the second inequality i turn it into the inequality i turn it into an equal sign i leave the y by itself which it is by itself then i draw my line my y intercept is negative two so I go to negative two. My slope is whatever number is in front of it. There's no number, so you have a one, make it a fraction, one over one. So my slope is one to right of a run, up one, one to the right. If there's any questions graphing those linear equations, please check the previous videos. I show all the process how to graph those linear inequalities. Now I made two points. I'm ready to draw my line. Before I draw my line, I go back to the inequality symbol. It has an equal, so it's going to be a solid line. So I just can draw a solid line, straight line, solid line. Okay. Now, once I have my line, then I go back. Oh, the y is by itself, and my inequality is less than. That means it's going to be below. So instead of doing lines, I'm going to put points. Below is all this, under, under. And in a minute, you're going to tell me where those two shades are going to intersect. 
because that's a whole idea. Okay, so if you notice, where are the two shades intersecting? On the top, on the right, or the bottom? That's right, here on the right. So this is the solution of the system. Where the two shades intersect is the solution of the system. Here you only have one shade, here you only have one shade. So that's not a solution. Here's the solution of the system. Okay, that's all what it means. So any point here, uh, let me give an example. Let's say four, four, negative one. That point is the solution of the system. Six, negative three, solution of the system. Uh, six, two, solution of the system. Three, three, four, not a solution. Uh, one, negative four, not, not a solution. Why? Because it's not part of this intersection. Okay, or any point here, negative 5, 2, for example, not a solution. All right, it has to be in the intersection of the two uh, shades. Let's do another one. Now, talking about those shades, now, they, they're here, they're giving me a system already, and it's graph. If you notice, here is, is darker. Why? Because here is the intersection between this, right? That's one, and the second one is this. We need to look where the two shades are intersecting. Where they're intersecting? Here, on the top. The only question they're asking you, and this should be an easy question, is circle the other pairs below that represent solutions. So which of these represent a solution to the system of inequalities? Now we understand that it has to be in the intersections. You gotta go check every single point. So let me start with the easy ones first. Zero, zero, where's zero, zero? Here. Is that inside the intersection? No, so it's not a solution. One, six. One and six around here. Is that inside the intersection? No, it's not. Let's check zero, nine. So zero, nine, right? That point is zero, nine. Is that a solution? That point is part of the line that is going to be intersecting this shaded area. And because this line is a solid line, then this point is a solution. The reason it's a solution is because it's the solid line and it's touching this area. Uh, nine, six. Nine, six. Around here, not a solution. Uh, so not. So I guess I'm hoping you get the idea. Let's check uh, negative one, nine. Negative one. 9 is right right here in the inside. Yes, it's a solution. So that's the idea. As soon as you see this, any point that is inside the shade or any point that is touching the solid line, if there's a point on the dashed line, it's not a solution. Remember, the dashed line is not part of the solution. So any point here won't be a solution. Any point on my solid line will be a solution or anything inside, it will be a solution, okay? All right, guys, remember, in the description, I always put a lot of materials and a lot of tools to help you. And all, as always, the, the website, a lot of tools. Let's move on. Now, to finish, we're gonna do a really, really crazy problem. A lot of people are gonna shut down, please don't. Let's read it first. Sometimes you can do, at least have the problem in an easy way. And maybe you can finish it, you know, without spending too much time again we don't want to spend too much time on one problem on the EOC why because you're gonna get uh, speeding up yourself and we don't want that all right and you're getting anxious and all that and we don't want that so you spend a couple of minutes you cannot move on and you flag it and you come back to it let's read it but at least you need to read it first one must purchase car insurance he needs to earn at least fifty dollars a week okay fifty money to cover the payments the most he can work each week is eight hours because of football practice. So this is the amount of hours he can work. So these are hours, these are money. Okay. Juan can earn $10 per hour moving. Uh, I don't think yards. You don't move a yard. You mow a yard. Mowing yards. And 12 per hour washing cards. Okay. So, okay. All right. Uh, by the way, guys, all this information that I take is from a website from the EOC. So this is as close as you can get from the EOC. 
same people that make the end of course exams all right for the algebra one let's go back to it so they gave you the system of inequalities this is a big plus so the first one this is fifty dollars right that he needs and the second one is eight hours so the bottom is hours and the top is money okay define the variables okay grab the system okay we can do that define what's x let's go back this is the amount of time that he can work so let's go back over here uh the most he can work each week is eight hours one can earn ten dollars per hour mowing yards all right so the x is the amount of hours so x number of hours mowing ah, that's a w yards right x that's what they're saying ten dollars per hour ten dollars per hour mowing yards the 12 hour washing cars so the the y right the 12 is next to the y so the y is number of hours washing cars y number of hours washing cars and now we have half of the problem wasn't too bad all right that's half credit the second question is graph the inequalities let's graph the inequalities race okay first inequality the first thing that I do is I take my inequality and I write it as an equation I have two choices I can leave the y by itself or remember I'm graphing this or I can just do the x and the y intercept please if you don't remember use go back to the video uh, the previous video and I show you how to graph this let's do the x and the y intercept to find the x intercept you make the y zero okay so I have 10x plus 12y instead of the y you put a zero right there equals to 50 10x anything times zero is zero is equal to 50 divided by 10 x equals 5 and this is your x intercept I got one of them let's find the y intercept I make the other one zero okay so 10 times x but I want the x to be 0 plus 12y equals to 50 10 times 0 is 0 12y equals to 50 divided by 12 and 50 divided by 12 is going to give you 4.17 which is around 4.2 and that's my y intercept and I have my two points now I draw my line before drawing my line, I go back to inequality. It has an equal underneath, so it's going to be a solid line. So, and now I have my solid line. The next thing I, think I need to do is shade. Okay, but we didn't leave the Y by itself. So how do we know if the shade is going to be a top and the bottom? Simple. We just check a point. So we check a point on the top or the bottom. The easiest point to check is always 0, 0. All right, I'm going to check 0, 0. in this inequality so i have 10 times x but this is your x and this is your y so my x is 0 plus 12 times y in my case is 0 greater than 50 10 times 0 is 0 12 times 0 is 0 is 0 greater than 50 is this true no, this is false because this is false. Oops, I did too many things. This is false, then that means the other side is going to be true. And whatever the side is true, then that's where my shade is going to be from my line towards that side. All of that side is going to be shaded. And I have one of them already. Let's do the second one. Second inequality is x plus y less than 8. I turn that into an equation that's an easy one to leave the y by itself because there's only the x on the side so y is equal to negative x plus 8 I can graph this my y intercept is going to be 8 and my slope is negative 1 over 1 which means I go down 1 and 1 to the right 
one and one down to the right, one down, and so on and so forth. So all those corners are going to be the points of my line. So if you notice, it's going to go diagonal. Oops. All right. Let's pretend that's a straight line, but you get the idea. So that's my line. Now I need to shade. So let's shade. To shade, I can do the same thing that I did in the first one. I can try a point because this line is not going through 0, 0. So I can check this point 0, 0. So 0, 0. Okay. Where? In the inequality. That means x plus y is less than 8. But the x is 0. The y is 0. That means 0 is less than or equal to 8. Is that true or false? That's true. So that means from my line, because this point is true, then my shade is going to be towards that point. So let me change this, the pattern. And hopefully you see where the two shades are intersecting right now. Right? The two shades are intersecting in the middle of the two lines. Nothing on the top, nothing on the bottom. Only one shade on the top, one shade on the bottom, but in the middle is the intersection of the two of them. And that's where the solution is. Once you see where's the solution, then you go back to the problem. Because the question was graph. I graph already. Now, find two possible combinations. So, any point from here is a solution to the inequalities. So, let's pretend this point. This point is 6, 1. 6, 1. What does that mean? 6 hours. Remember, this is the x, which is the yards, right? And the bottom is the number of hours in cars. So, he can spend 6 hours washing yards. I'm sorry, mowing yards and one hour washing cars. Graph the system to find two possible combinations. This is one possible combination. Six comma one. Six hour mowing yards, one hour washing cars. Another one. Mm, this point. This point is one comma five. One comma five. What does that mean? One hour is the X, so one hour mowing yards, five hours washing cars. Another combination. Any point in between, this is 3 comma 3, meaning 3 hours mowing yards plus 3 hours washing cars. Any of those will give you the 50 that he's looking for. Why? Because anything in between is a solution to the inequality. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, help me out. This, uh, help me grow this channel. Next one is solving systems by substitution and animation. Uh, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.